Welcome back. It is Friday and that means it's yet another FNA Friday. And today we're going to talk about how to take your exercise shots and then escalate them into something more complex. I'm a big fan of taking regular exercises like the jump, a gear change, especially a weight assignment like a box lift, and just adding a bit more to it so it's less of an exercise, but more like a shot, a shot you would see in the movie or out of a TV show, something that has a bit more character and feels a bit more aware of the environment and something where the character has an action and an objective and that he or she wants to do something and it just happens to involve weight or a gear change or whatever it is. So in this case, I'm gonna take a look at a jump. You can do a jump where a character just stands, jumps up and down or jumps from A to B, maybe with a step or two for anticipation and then on the jump and then a settle. So there are lots of ways to kind of trick out your exercise, but it's still kind of an exercise. In this case, I'm gonna show you how you take a jump but then you go a bit further and then you start adding different elements multiple cuts different cameras and so make it more of a sequence the length of the shot is always going to be the same and you can of course add and add and add and at one point it's going to be way too complex and for you you might have done maybe half of what i'm going to show but then maybe the next steps go oh that's interesting i could try that so for you it's at any point you can say this is getting too ridiculous i want to stop here but i want to go through the full gamut of this is what you can do and this is how far you could push it which again you can push it you know in so many ways. So in this case, I'm going to take a jump that is not up and down and not from A to B. I'm just going to add something a bit bigger. So in this case, if you watch this, that's it. It's about 10 seconds. And the big change is that there is a gap here. The character has to go from A to B. There's a reason why the character jumps over this because there is a gap. It's very simple and the whole thing is going to be layout styles. It's not going to be full animation. So it's more about the principles of what the shot could be. But this angle is weird. The perspective is weird. It's just the camera pulled back and the angles over the cubes is all kind of weird. So I'm not a massive fan, but still you can trick this out where it's about a canyon or something about some dangerous hole that an adventurer has to jump over. So there are many things. So instead of just jumping up and down or just slightly from A to B, give the character a reason. I have to jump over this because I'm playful. I'm a kid jumping over a creek or again, an adventurer jumping over a big gap of whatever rock formations or whatever it is. So now it's up to you to kind of look at this hmm, character goes from A to B. There is a hole. Why is the character jumping over this? And now you have total free to create a character and create a situation where this would be appropriate. So now we're gonna go one step further. Character goes through, okay. We have some changes there, still the same length. So now we have a surprise exit. So you can kind of establish what the environment is. And again, this is very, very simple. You got whatever vegetation formation character comes in that makes for a more interesting surprise appearance of the character. And it's interesting because it goes from far away. So you have full body mechanics to up close. You have a bigger opportunity to show facial animation. And then we cut to the actual jump. So this is far away for a nice silhouette. You can really push the body mechanics. And then we get to the landing for potentially interesting foot squash, you got a little, you know, you could add little pieces falling off, just a bit more of an interesting detail and complexity of a land. So then we cut to this shot where you have the character being a bit closer to the camera and then further away and the complexities of a turn. So it's the same, technically kind of the same animation, but you're adding different camera angles so you can show off different elements, full body, a bit closer, complexities of a turnaround. So it's already a bit more challenging for sure but also a bit more interesting to watch. Now we're gonna look at this. So we're adding more detail. Character escapes from a creature. You got a few more elements and some camera moves. So we are adding a bit more interest. We got a bit of a diagonal in here and you got a bit more interesting vegetation. Again, this is still super simple, but you got some more colors. Character still comes out of the bushes, but now we are giving the character a reason the character is being chased by something. And in this case, it would be a creature. So you can show off your four legged animation skill set. And we have a little bit of a camera move where we are going to the right. You're flowing to the right with the character and it cuts into this shot where the camera is also still going to the right. It's a bit of a more consistency of camera energy and, and the action of the characters going from shot to shot. It's a bit more consistent there. Then we get to this shot where 
imagine the creature would be here. This is what a creature is. Mouth open, trying to grab this character who is going, ah! So you could have a really interesting action beat through here. And if the creature doesn't make it, falls down, he can just escape or she can just escape. And you have, as you can see previously, the camera goes left to right. Here the camera goes left to right and the camera falls down with, with the characters. There's a bit more energy that flows into this. And before that we had an empty shot, but here you can see some interesting elements. This could be the last moment of the creature looking, ah, falling down. And then as we exit here, the new element comes into frame with whatever complex landing you want to add here into this where the character now has a reason to turn around going i made it the creature is gone and i'm safe so you can see more elements to it there is now a reason for the character to go from a to b it's an escape and he has to go or she has to go through whatever elements that might be dangerous and in this case there is a jump involved and again, you can show off complexities of body mechanics for a human and now a creature. And you have a bit more camera movement to make it a bit more interesting. It's a bigger flow, kind of supports the actions of the characters with the left to right and up and down, but it's not too much. And it doesn't feel like the camera does a crazy 360 or is in some way distracting from the action. But again, it's one more step, but let's go one step further. So now we have this. Let's go through this version. Yeah, still a character being chased by the creature lands it's safe now and ka -ka! Ka -ka! Ka -ha! so <laughs> so there's one more thing you could add so let's go through what i did here so you can have now a foreground element and you can show off different creature animation and flutters down is kind of scared off by the background action we get with a focus change character still escapes the same creature same elements with the camera moves the landing, all that is the same. Hand off between the focus here. And as we think that the character is safe, you have the surprise element of another creature coming in and grabbing your character. And you can kind of play with camera conventions where if a character is here, right, looking this way, there is not that much room. There's more room here. It makes it a bit uncomfortable. You would expect potentially something coming in here. But then what you do, you turn around your character by 180 and you give this the classic look of right to left. There's more room here. It feels more comfortable, which then sets up the audience for a surprise because now out of nowhere, this comes in and it would be less effective if it would come in from screen left. It would come in much faster. It wouldn't be that much of a surprise. Grabs the character and then exits. So again, you can add all kinds of things to escalate the shot, make it more interesting, make it more crazy. This might be too much for you. And you know, this is more complex in terms of creature animation, but it could be anything. It could be some monkeys running through and grabbing the character or whatever. Maybe there's a sinkhole that opens and the character falls down. So there are different elements that you can add at the very end for like one more thing, a little button at the end for that extra little joke. But as you add those elements, you wanna make sure that you don't confuse the audience. So there's one more thing I wanna show you in terms of, well, as we add camera moves and as we add more creatures, what can we do to make sure that the audience is always following and not going, whoa, what is this? And freaking out and stuff is just coming everywhere. So I added this little circle with audiences looking here to show you how we can connect the shots and connect the actions so that the audience is not confused. Or hopefully not confused. You can always tell me what you think in the comments, but here we go. So. I have this little creature coming down. We're always looking at the creature. And the creature ends up where the vegetation is moving and the other character comes in. So it's not as confusing as imagine there's a creature here and your character would jump in from the right. Big surprise for the audience. Maybe that could be interesting, but it would also be potentially jarring and confusing. So I'm kind of guiding the audience with that little creature to where the human character comes in. Now, at this point, we are switching from right to left. There's a bit of a change, but at the same time, there are eyes of the character. And usually for an audience member, you kind of look at eyes. The moment your character covers his or her eyes or turns around, we're kind of losing focus, we're losing interest, and we start to wander. So in this case, I'm using that to my advantage. So you see the eyes of the human, and as it goes off frame, we're kind of losing focus in, yeah, we're kind of not that interested in looking at a belly or, you know, legs. And right when that happens, I'm introducing this new character where the focus shifts. And you can see where this character kind of ends. We are again 
cutting to where this character is. So it's not going from maybe we have the creature exit here and then the next shot, the human is here. That might be too much of a change for the audience. So I'm trying to keep this pretty smooth for the audience in terms of where they have to look. So creatures here, here is the human. Again, we follow, follow, follow. And again, as they fall down, camera goes down, characters go down, everything goes down and I'm keeping that action consistent. This creature goes down and over the cut, it's still going down, the camera's going down, but in terms of where we're looking, it's pretty much overlapping. You don't wanna be super 100% precise, but then it feels potentially too artificial, but that's just enough to go down. And now as we lose the focus, there's nothing to look at, this comes right in for handoff and we can look here. And I'm cutting a bit sooner here. It's not a complete exit. You might argue maybe you wanna exit completely with the feet, now, if the character is actually getting up, you know, it could be something where it's like this, like who knows what the poses are of the legs, but generally I'm keeping it on the right side of the screen. And then as we cut, we are still right side of the screen, at least that. Again, there's just enough of an overlap. So it's not super confusing. And we turn around, we're looking here, we settle, like I said, there's more room here. It feels more comfortable. And now I am using the surprise element, but because the distance here is so short, it's not super jarring, but enough of something you wouldn't expect to create that surprise. And the audience is of course taken aback at what is going on and refocuses it. And that is also kind of the role of the camera. The camera is not aware, doesn't know it in advance. So as they exit, they break frame and then the camera person catches up to reframe until the very end. So this is my approach in terms of how you could escalate a shot. You just have an exercise where a character does something, but now you wanna give the character a purpose. There is an objective, there's an action, there's a want, there's something that the character wants to do. And usually what I like is to add conflict. Now this is gonna be an FNA in the future. It's all about adding conflict because of many reasons, but I don't wanna go into that later. But in this case, again, I have a reason for the character to escape. There's a creature chasing, there's something happening in the middle and a surprise at the end. So there's more stuff that you can layer on top of each previous version to give this a bit more interest. Technically, you could reshuffle the whole thing and just keep it to one camera. I know in specific schools, you might not have the freedom to add cameras. Sometimes teachers and mentors and myself included, sometimes you just wanna go, listen, focus on the animation only. Let's not add crazy camera stuff because camera movement can be tricky and it can make it look CG and kind of stiff and sometimes wrong. So it can be distracting. So I'd be very careful when and how you add camera moves or cuts. But I still, I'm a fan of sequences because you can have one overall action, but can, you can show off separate details. So one shot could be wide for full body mechanics, and then you cut to closer to then show that action scene where someone is escaping, so they're potentially panicked, uh, you know, not very confident, and then you can show off some close-up acting where you show off through the facial animation how panicked that character is. So it doesn't always have to be one locked off camera showing the main action. It just all depends what your focus is. You wanna just show full body, mechanics, silhouette, and a nice view of the action. Totally fine, far away, locked off camera. But even something where it's an acting shot where someone sits and then stands, I'm okay with adding a camera tilt so you give the character room to get up and then change the posture, the silhouette, and all that good stuff. So I'm not in the camp of always have a steady camera, no movement. It just depends on who attacks the shot. So for any teachers listening, you know, just look at what the skill set is of the students and are they okay with doing a simple camera tilt to keep it simple enough so they're not overwhelmed, but you give them just enough to add more dimension to the shot and some more elements or more freedom for the character to do something, to take a step over or sit down, we just follow with the camera. So next week, I will talk about more examples. There's so much more you can do, but I wanna go through some of the classic exercises that I'm sure a lot of people are doing, like a jump, like a weight assignment, like a sit down, and what you could do to make this just a bit more complex so that your shot is a bit more shot-like. So it's not like a pure exercise where the potential person who watches it really goes, mm, students, that's an exercise, where it feels more like, well, that was a cool shot with the character showing character and having emotions and just something where it's less of A to B and going through the motion of an exercise. If you know of any type of exercises that have been transformed into something more complex, leave a comment. I'm always interested in seeing examples that I can then show to my future students. If you like this and it was helpful to you, leave a comment, hit the like button. And if you wanna get updates to all the uploads, which are on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you get notified for all the uploads. And as always, 
Thank you for watching till the very end. Thank you for taking your valuable minutes and hours out of your life to watch this. I highly appreciate it. And I will see you next week for another FNA or Thursday for an acting clip or potentially some surprises at the beginning of the week. Thank you.